What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to discuss the apparent team up of the Medusa and the Flubot Moleware families. Both are now being distributed via the same network. Now infection from these more adds your system to a botnet, as well as has the potential to steal bank credentials, intercept messages, things like multi-factor authentication tokens, and it can even change the recipient for something like a bank transfer. Let's see what else we can learn to protect ourselves and others from this story. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. The Flubot malware, aka Cabasus, is delivered to targets through SMS text messages that prompt them to install a missed package delivery, like DHL, for example, think DHL, um, or a full version of Flash Player. The malicious implant also sends out additional text messages to the infected device's contact list, which allows it to go viral. Now, no research shows that Medusa malware has joined Flubot's distribution network. And that's according to Threat Fabric, which found that the Medusa uh, malware is now being distributed through the same SMS phishing infrastructure as Flubot, resulting in high-volume, side-by-side campaigns. In case you're not familiar with them, Threat Fabric is a cybersecurity company that provides banks with the expertise and tools to detect known and unknown threats to mitigate fraud and deflect risk. If a victim falls for this SMS ruse, the malware is installed, which adds the infected device to a botnet. Then it sets about gaining permissions, stealing banking information and credentials, lifting passwords stored on the device, and squirreling away various pieces of personal information. Threadfabric researchers noted in a Monday analysis, in less than a month, this distribution approach allowed Medusa to reach more than 1,500 infected devices in one botnet masquerading as DHL. After targeting Turkish financial organizations in its first period of activity in 2020, Medusa has now switched its focus to North America and Europe, which results in a significant number of infected devices. Powered with multiple remote access features, Medusa poses a critical threat to financial organizations in those targeted regions. First discovered in July 2020, Medusa, which is related to the Tanglebot family of rats, is a mobile banking trojan that can gain near complete control over a user's device, including capabilities for key logging, banking trojan activity, and audio and video streaming. To boot, it has received several updates and improvements in its obfuscation techniques as it hops on the Flubot's infrastructure coattails. For one, it now has an accessibility scripting engine that allows actors to perform a set of actions on the victim's behalf with the help of Android Accessibility Service. By abusing accessibility services, Medusa is able to execute commands on any app that is running on a victim's device. A command like fill focus allows the malware to set the text value of any specific text box to an arbitrary value chosen by the attacker. For example, when you want to send your nephew a, a bank to a wire transfer for his birthday, this particular malware has the ability to, to change the recipient. The information you type in gets changed to an arbitrary value, most likely a bank or a recipient of their choosing from these attackers. Accessibility Events Logging is a companion upgrade to the above. With a specific command, Medusa can collect information about active windows, including the position of fields and certain elements within a user interface, any text inside those elements, and whether the field is a password field. The command and control server can also command Medusa to carry out a wide variety of rat work, including clicking on a specific UI element, sleeping, screenshotting, locking the screen, providing a list of, rec of recent apps, and opening recent notifications. In addition, another potential abuse of this functionality could be to respond to social application interactions with notifications containing malicious phishing links or containing um, multi-factor authentication uh, tokens. Considering the popularity of these type of apps and the strong focus of Flubot on distribution tactics, this could easily be the main MO behind this new notification direct reply abuse, according to Threat Fabric. So what can we learn from all of this? Well, we are doing more and more on our phones. There's no denying that. 
A lot of people that spend more time on their phone than sometimes they do with their family. There's always a buzz, a beep, a funny meme, or a really, really, really important cybersecurity episode from your favorite YouTuber, wink, wink, out with the added use and convenience of using your phone to do things you used to only do on your big clunky desktop or laptop computer, the attackers are also flocking to your phone. They got the message, you go where the people are. So it's imperative that we realize this ourselves and take specific precautions while using our tiny extended brains in our pocket. And I'm talking about our phones. Number one, don't click on links and SMS messages. Number two, try to do all of your banking or other important sensitive tasks on your laptop or desktop that most likely or hopefully has more security implemented. You could also walk to the bank, but that's just an insane idea of this day and age. Can you imagine standing in line? Are you nuts? Number three, only install apps and updates via the official channels, like your app store in the case of apps, or via your phone's setting session in case of the, IO, the operating system updates. Now, no company is, or no company should be, sending you updates via email or text message or pop-up. I mean, really? You think while you're surfing some torrent site, all of a sudden there's going to be some really legitimate alert that you need to install a Flash Player? You do know, first of all, you should not be on tor torrent sites, right? So, this threat has so many capabilities to steal your, steal your sensitive information, you know, take over your bank account, steal your crypto. And don't forget, it can spread itself to your contact list. If you're not careful, you just might be the person who spread malware to your entire family. Now that's a tough Thanksgiving dinner. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.